Welcome to my channel, Blessings. It's good to see you or you see me. It's been a while since I've been here, but I've been focusing on the Lord and seeking Him deeper as we all should. Um, and today I have a very unique video. I want to share my testimony about how God delivered me from a cigarette addiction. Uh, and through this video, I just want to give God all the glory and honor, and I just pray that it will reach the right people. And recently, God has been leading me to share this because it's really powerful. Um, and, and God is just so powerful in general. The things He does is amazing. And I just want to share this with you. Um, just make sure that if you like this testimony, like, share, uh, subscribe, and don't be afraid to comment. And I would love to try to chat with you if you would like to talk about anything. Uh, so let's just get right to it. So I want to start off with uh, the beginning of this. It's kind of hard to think where to start, but I do have right here, I'm sorry if I look to the side, I have my computer. Uh, I do have a blog, so I wrote it in a blog. So once this video is up, I will also link down below a blog version, a written version of this testimony, if you're interested in that. And also if you're interested in subscribing to my blog for any updates and things that I write about. So let's just jump right in. Um, so early on in my walk with God, honestly, when God came into my life, he did like radical changes he came in and he just like radically just began to change everything one day I will share the way that I came into Christ but that is a testimony in itself uh, it's super intense but it was a radical experience um, but let's start from before Christ because I was not born into the church um, I want to talk about how I even began to smoke cigarettes where did this stem off of what was this addiction like to me uh, so I actually started smoking when I was the age of 16. So I was a young, curious teenager, and I wanted to feel independent, do whatever it is that I wanted to do. And the reality is I involved myself with the wrong people. Um, and I began to dabble into things that I honestly had no business doing at that age. But I was doing it, um, and you know, in my being lost and confused. I began to smoke the cigarettes and I became addicted to this very nasty habit. Um, and honestly, I didn't have the proper direction then um, or, or like uh, people that could help me to know what was wrong or right. I just know that I wanted to find my identity or just I didn't know what to do. I was kind of a lost teenager and I just fell into this and it was not good at all. Uh, so obviously I began to smoke at 16 and then as I grew this addiction also grew. This cigarette smoking addiction was something really intense for me in my life because in this time of my life when I began to smoke cigarettes as a teenager, you know, as a teenager your emotions are all over the place. Uh, you have highs and lows. You, you know, you don't have any balance emotionally I feel like for most teenagers, especially if you don't have a relationship with God and I did not. I felt like I was a lost soul just wandering around with no leadership, no guidance, no preparation for life. So I just kind of fell into these things. Uh, and so quickly with cigarettes, because as because I began to smoke them in a really like kind of fragile part, portion of my life in growing, it became a really dependent thing for me. So if I be, if I was, uh, whether it was a good or bad emotion, I became dependent off of them because it kind of would feed uh, that that desire. It, it's like desiring an addiction is the is to me. It's like a craving for something, right? You crave, it's something that like feeds a craving. Like when you have this desire, it's a way to like, to kind of cover this craving or to kind of uh, feed it in a sense, but it never fully satisfies anything at the end of the day, which is where you'll probably like uh, abuse the habit. And I did that. So if I was having uh, moments of anxiety, I that's what I would do. If I was happy, I would do that. Whatever the emotions were, or when I was going through traumatic experiences in my life, that was the go-to thing for me. Um, and it really dominated my life, and I would say that I abused it highly because it was it, it was almost like a, an escape for me. It, it, even in the midst of like the chaos in my life, it was what I went to to kind of like feel like some form of pleasure where everything when everything around was not pleasurable. Um, so, and I'm not going to go too much deeper into that of my past in the blog. I'll, I actually explain a little bit more, uh, but to move forward. So yeah, so I was smoking these cigarettes, move uh, fast forward, I actually became a young mom at the age of 18. And in this time I was smoking cigarettes and I actually stopped smoking cigarettes for the duration of my whole pregnancy. And honestly getting pregnant even though I was young was motivating for me to stop smoking cigarettes and kind of just change that habit. 
but then I had my baby my first burn my first first born and when I had her um, not long after when stress began to happen in my life I felt back into that addiction of the cigarettes and so right the, the years have gone and this is again this the addiction is something no matter what kind of addiction that it is it becomes more and more obsessive uh, according to what you use it for right because I feel like addiction what happens is it almost becomes like a god rather than god Jesus Christ in our lives who has dominion and control over every situation when we don't have relationship with him whatever it is that we are finding that need to meet in that becomes the obsession and that almost becomes the god and like where we look to for some comfort uh but the difference of the things in the world is whatever you look for comfort in the world does not sustain itself it's not sustainable it does not last it's empty at the end of the day it is temporary pleasure and and truly it's not even that pleasurable it's just feeding an empty feeling or feeding an empty thing Anyway, so I had my daughter and I fell back into this addiction and that continued on. I did have another child and I tried the same thing, quitting, but I always felt back into it. And I honestly got to a point in my life where I felt that I was not going to be able to overcome this addiction because when you're in the world as well, I believe that things just feel so bigger. They are bigger than you when you're when you feel like you're all alone. And I just didn't see how I could overcome this. And in a sense, it became like a, a toxic comfort. Uh, because I knew that it wasn't good and, and it, it didn't match me as a person, as a whole, um, it's just not good. But then, so fast forward now to when 2020, right? And I was at the, when God came and rescued me and I'm just so thankful to him for that. Thank you, Jesus, that you came and you rescued me. But fast forward to, I'm sorry, I'm looking to the side at my computer, but fast forward to 2020 when God came and rescued me and I was in this very uh almost at the end of myself uh I think I was at, at the peak of of all the destruction that my life was undergoing this was like I was quite literally at the end of myself and I was in this very toxic experience where it pushed me to seek God it pushed me to know want to know more about him because um, I did grow up Catholic and I had an idea of God but I was never taught relationship to really fully understand how real he really is but this time you know I was so overwhelmed and just so at the end of myself that I pursued God and you know that's in another testimony I'll share more details to that but let's just jump to this and I, so God came and saved me and it was a radical experience and um, within four months of seeking God I, I remember that I began to kind of like feel like a pull to go deeper that's what felt so radical about God that it just felt like I, I went from two different worlds like and just completely felt like I invested my life into God like I was so desiring to know him um, it's like he just took over my heart um, and I remember that so I got saved around between August and September so four months later was January it was about to be January and in this towards the end of December I felt this desire to fast as you know, most Christians, um, in the beginning of the year, we do a Daniel fast, a uh, fasting to to really start at the year right and, and, and in a deeper relationship and alignment with God. And I didn't really understand fasting or anything that too much, but I did enough research to understand and be like, okay, I'm going to do this. And honestly, in that time, to take that, that courage or so early on, I honestly think there's no way that was of my own strength that was only god that could do such a thing because i was very determined and now when i think back to it i just think like wow you really did a 21 day daniel fast and even what i'm about to explain that i did right so early on in your walk so i 100 percent believe that that was only the power of god and the holy spirit leading me to do something so big because god really wanted deliverance for me because a hundred percent of my own strength I would never be able to do that and I still can but so I began to feel this pull to do this fasting and actually prior to when it was almost time I actually got baptized on the 27th of December three days before starting this fast because my goal was to begin January 1st to January 21 21st and three days before I got baptized and that was such a wonderful experience because personally for me I, I genuinely felt a supernatural experience. 
I remember that when I got baptized, I felt like my whole body, my whole spirit was going through this experience. And, and it just, it was, I actually literally felt a physical experience. And maybe that can be a testimony I can share if anyone is interested, what experience I felt. And, and obviously I feel like it's the, it's the Holy Ghost fire. Like I had an encounter with the Lord and I felt that he was doing something within me. Um, so this prepared the way for this fasting to do this 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 plan that I had and first of all I'm sorry I wanted to say that in my mind I also had the plan that uh, when I did this 21 day fasting um, I was going to quit cigarettes cold turkey and I don't want to forget this and and I'm sorry if I'm anyway I'm all over the place I want to keep this video organic not forced but natural uh, and so with that I want to say that Prior to that, what even led me in the desire also to want to fast, to get rid of this addiction in my life, was because now that I was in Christ, I was catching myself also having these toxic behaviors that if I was going through highs and lows emotionally in Christ, I would go to the cigarette for that relief. And that's an issue because, again, it takes that place of God in my life. Rather than being God who's leading me, I'm, you know, depending on these things to lead me or, or to fulfill a need that only God can. And so I, you know, of course, this was an addiction that I felt like I abused it depending on how stressed I was. And, I, and it was pretty stressful transitioning and changing my life and experiencing um, spiritual warfare, which was something totally new to me. Um, and just having my eyes open. So all that was so much emotion that it took me in deeper addiction with the cigarettes and I began to abuse them. But as I began to do that, because the Holy Spirit was within me now, I began to feel convicted. And so that conviction was what started to push me to feel determined to, to change things. And then I know in my heart that then God led me like, okay, now to fast, right? Okay, so let's jump fast forward. I got baptized. And now it's January 1st and I'm doing this fasting and I began cold turkey the first day. And, and if you know what the Daniel fast is, you also change your whole way of eating. You're not eating meats, sugars, coffee, all kinds of things. And I was, I'm a coffee drinker. So at this point, I not only was I going through like a coffee withdrawal, I was going through this cigarette addiction withdrawal, the nicotine, and also the change of foods totally. So for like the first week of the fast, I honestly was like laid out on the on the couch. I didn't really have much strength. I, I was experiencing like a lot on my body and it took a lot of strength that could have only come from the power of God. Um, and, and I pushed and I remember that every time that I would feel like I couldn't do this anymore or, or like I had a craving for a cigarette or I didn't have any strength, um, I began to ask God and seek God and ask him to, to give me the strength and to help me. Uh, and I just remember asking him, God, please take this addiction from me. Help me, Lord. I would plead every time that I would feel it. I would say the same things. Please take this, please take this addiction from me, Jesus. Take this from me. And so the days kept going, the days kept going, and it became easier and better. And and it was like he was detoxifying my body from all of that. And I made it to the 21 days, and I did it. I did it, and and God did it. I, 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 I made it through by God's grace. And it was just such a powerful experience. And as I'm saying that, I feel the presence of God because it, it was just such an important experience for me because... I feel that this deliverance that he gave me of cigarettes was the beginning of how God was going to begin to heal me from many things that I have had that I've experienced prior and and this was like one of those layers that needed to be removed also to remove any barrier that stopped God from getting closer to me um, and now I understand that many things that I went through were all God removing anything that took his place in my life so that he could lead and he could be in full control of things. Um, so yes, so moving forward with that, um, I finished the fasting and ever since I finished that fasting, the 21 day fast, going in cold turkey after smoking for 10 years because, so let me just say that by the way, I'm sorry. So I started smoking at 16 and then when I got saved, I was, it was in, I was 26 years old. So this was a whole full 10 years later. Um, and if you have had any cigarette addiction, you know what that's like, uh, especially if you've done it for a decade or more right 
So at the end of this fasting, I completed it, and I've never smoked a cigarette ever since. And I've kept this testimony until it was the right time to share it. But it's a powerful testimony because if God has done it for me, he can 100% do it for you with whatever it is that you're struggling with. Whatever situation that you feel bound by, it is God's will for us to be delivered. And so to not continue to make this video too much longer, I do want to share some scripture that um, where to encourage you into what the Bible says uh, about deliverance. What is God's promises to you about deliverance to just show you that God is capable to do exceedingly and abundantly more than what you could ever imagine. Uh, so I just have a couple scriptures that also are in my blog. I'm going to just share some. I'm not sure if I will share all. But one of the first ones that I have is Galatians, the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. And it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And as I say, read that. I want to just elaborate a little bit on that in the sense of the yoke of slavery. The reality is God desires deliverance for us because when we are bound to these kind of things, we are a slave to those things. And God does not want that for us. We are a slave to the things of the world. And God desire, desires deliverance and freedom for us. And freedom can only be found in Christ. Um, he does not want us to, to find fulfillment and need in the things of the world that will hurt us more rather than help us. Um, so that one's a really powerful scripture. The next one that I have is the book of James chapter 4 verse 7 and it says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And this one's also a really powerful one because when we take those uh, moments of obedience to trust God and what he's asking us to do, and I just want to say it doesn't matter how long you're walking with Christ, if he's in your life and he has taken full control and dominion, he will do what it is that he wants to do to bring freedom to your life. All it takes you is to give him all full authority and dominion and he takes over and, um, and yeah, you begin to resist the devil. Obey God, resist him. And when you resist these things that he, that he has kept you bound by, you will be set free. The devil flees from you and this is a promise from God. There is power. There is a transformation. There is a changes come to your life when you submit to the Lord and when you reject the things of the enemy, when you reject the things of the world. And while it may be hard for a period of time, God is with you and he will lead you and guide you and protect you through that process and, and pull you through and get you through. And the last one that I want to read is um, Psalms chapter 34 verse 4 and it says I sought the Lord and he answered me he delivered me from all my fears and this one's so beautiful because I want to end this video with just with the with the understanding and the knowing that if you begin a relationship with the Lord and if you seek him above all things and and you earnestly genuinely seek him the things that he will do in your life are beyond what you can imagine and it's important to know that these things are not going to be easy. They're going to be difficult because it's going to require you to completely transform your life and do a new thing. But God is with you in this new thing. And so he upholds you. He protects you. And he takes care of you and guides you through it all. And, um, and what happens on the other side of that is absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to end there. I hope that you enjoyed my testimony. I hope that it encourages you to just see the power of God. And if you're possibly experiencing the same type of experience or any type of situation where you feel that you need deliverance from God, seek him in that deliverance. And actually, before I end, I have something in my blog that I want to share. In my blog, I share uh, three things that um, you can do. There are three facts on how you can become free through deliverance. And one of those is this. Number two says, deliverance doesn't always come immediately, but it will come to those who prepare for their deliverance and wait on the Lord. So I wanted to just end that with that verse. I'm sorry, with that understanding that 
you may not receive that deliverance that you're seeking right away. Maybe you have fasted. Maybe you've done things and things haven't changed, but do not give up. Do not lose heart. Wait on the Lord. Continue to pursue that deliverance. And that is his promise. And his promises are true. He is, God is not a man that he shall lie. And those promises will come to pass. You will be delivered and you will receive the promises of God. So just continue to pursue that deliverance and wait on the Lord. I hope that this testimony encourages you. And, and it just shows you how wonderful and how powerful God is. And how much he loves us. And I just want to give God all the glory and all the honor for all that he has done for me. And for the healing that he has brought to me through the many ways that he has delivered me from the many things i hope that you enjoyed this testimony and if you're interested in many more testimonies please let me know down below because i have many that i do want to share to glorify god i pray god continues to bless you i pray um, that you have an encounter with the lord and i hope to see you back soon much love god bless